price support in Yu-Gi-Oh! has never really been all that great. Whether you're talking about what you get for making top 8 at a regional qualifier, all the way up to the top cuts, or even winning a YCS. As sad as this may sound, Konami has been able to get away with mediocre pricing because, for the most part, Yu-Gi-Oh! really hasn't needed to step its game up in that department. Yes, Magic and Pokemon have always been our major competition and rivals for years, but outside of those two specifically, Konami has rarely ever had to worry about duelists jumping ship to other prominent TCGs. And if we're being honest here, nearly every other trading card game in the past 20 years, outside of the big three, has failed, with most not even reaching the fourth or fifth year. At least that was the case until very recently. Most, heck even Konami, may not have noticed yet, but there does seem to be a troubling and concerning trend of some of Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest and brightest stars, or its heavyweight competitive duelists, aka pro players, quitting Yu-Gi-Oh in favor of other TCGs. I'll start off by saying, personally, I wouldn't have found this alarming, because sometimes people just want to try new things after playing one game for so long. But the sentiment appears to be that the pros aren't leaving because they're bored or tired of Yu-Gi-Oh, but rather because the prize support in rival games is so overwhelmingly better that there's almost no point of them continuing to devote so much time and energy into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh for such a mediocre payoff. Here's a recent example of what I mean. A post on Twitter from 5 time YCS champion and current player Christian Urena. Christian says, I can't believe we are playing Yu-Gi-Oh over any other game. The way these new games run their tournaments and prizes are miles ahead of a company that has been doing this for over two decades. One Piece, Lurkana, Dragon Ball, you name it. It just sucks Yu-Gi-Oh has better gameplay. This post got a bit of traction and replies, not just for being brutally honest and kind of saying what people have been thinking for at least the last five years or so, but for also pointing out how even relatively new games like Lurkana and One Piece blow Yu-Gi-Oh out of the water in terms of prize support despite the fact that we're the highest selling TCG of all time. Some of the replies included Milano, who said you get better prize support at the dentist, or Jared, who flat out said that he was ready to ditch Yu-Gi-Oh for Lurkana because of this issue. At this point, you're probably thinking, well, come on, Cap. Just because Urena said it doesn't mean everyone else is thinking it, which is definitely true, but if you were to look around, you'd also see players like YCS champion Rafael Nevin, who left us and now plays the One Piece TCG or four-time YCS winner Andres Torres, who went to the Pokemon trading card game and even stated in his top four Ultimate UDS deck profile that he had been spending all his time recently playing Pokemon and not Yu-Gi-Oh. Furthermore, Lurkana just hosted a major championship of over 2,000 players in Atlanta over the weekend, and this championship was won by none other than a former Yu-Gi-Oh player, and also former small Yu-Gi tuber, Joshua Potrer. Some might be wondering about the prize support discrepancy between us and our contemporaries. It can't be that bad, right? Okay, well let's use the premier high-end circuit series from each game, because that creates a perfect and equal baseline. For Yu-Gi-Oh, the YC CS pricing includes a top cut rubber game mat for 32nd through 17th place. This mat sells for about $100 on the secondary market. 9th through 16th get the mat in addition to a box of the current core booster set, so eh, basically just add another $60 on top of that. 4th through 8th trade in the booster box for a Nintendo Switch, and the top 3 receive a YCS prize card in various rarities, with the top 2 duelists also netting themselves a quote unquote premium messenger bag, as Konami calls it. I'll note that if the YCS event is over 2,049 players, the top cut match is also awarded to anyone who finishes 33rd through 64th place, but overall, it's just not very good pricing in my opinion. The mat, I think it's a nice start, but let's be real, it should probably be a cloth mat and not the cheap rubber kind. I also feel that it's just not enough for making top 32 of, what, usually 1,500 to 2,000 players? The next step up in pricing also kind of feels like an insult. You get a box of the current set and a plastic goldfish style box, which also just kind of screams lazy. I mean, Konami brings tons of these packs and booster boxes to the events because everyone who enters gets five of them, so it's not anything special or unique. The Nintendo Switch also isn't impressive in my opinion because it's a seven year old video game system at this point and something that is not desirable by many of your players at all. 
So for one of the most popular, arguably the most popular trading card game in the history of the world, I just don't think that uh, the prizing for our flagship competitive circuit series is all that good. Now let's take a look at Lurkana, which obviously I am no expert on and I believe may have just started its YCS level series circuit. Lurkana seems incredibly promo based, meaning that its main prizing for top cut finishers are promo cards that appear to be alternate rarity or extended forms of cards they already have in their game. Lurkana's top 64 card is Elsa's Let It Go, which I'm gonna be honest here, I couldn't even believe this when I saw it. This card starts at $1,750 on eBay and only has a single listing on TCG Player, which is $1,800 at the time of me recording this video. The top 32 receives Cinderella's Stout Hearted, TCG lowest verified $422. Top 16 gets Rapunzel's Gifted with Healing, TCG Lowest Verified $425. Top 8 gets a Rapunzel mat, which I actually could not find a price for. And finally, Top 4 receives Mickey Mouse's Brave Little Tailor, TCG Lowest Verified $1,000. So I think you can see a stark contrast between Lurkana giving out significantly more valuable prizes and to more players on top of that. Keep in mind this is simply the minimal prizes which extends to 128 players if the Lorcana event is 1,025 players or higher. Also notice that people in the Lorcana subreddit were posting that they won special Cinderella mats for playing side events and when I searched up this special Cinderella mat, its lowest listing on eBay was a whopping $6,000 which I mean, let's be real, even if it sold for just half of that, that would well exceed what anyone at a YCS is winning. I mean, well, specifically a YCS winner is taking home in prizing. I looked into One Piece's Treasure Cup Circuit, which full disclosure does appear to be a year round tournament, probably similar to how the PGA Tour or NASCAR works, where your ranking changes from week to week. However, I believe at the end of each season within the year, the prizes are awarded. Regardless, much like Lurkana, the pricing is absolutely insane in the One Piece TCG. Top 64 receiving an $800 Yamato card, Top 16 and Top 8 getting cards like Big Mom and Kaido that sell for thousands of dollars. Also, just quick side note, shout outs to the One Piece TCG for having insane spoilers in your card game because some of us haven't gotten to those later arcs. So uh, yeah, that's just something that I'm a little annoyed by. Anyways, One Piece's model is very similar to Lakana, where you don't necessarily get new cards for their competitive series, but instead they give out special versions of cards that can only be achieved from this series, or I guess from buying them in the secondary market. Other major TCGs like Pokemon and Magic the Gathering just cut the middleman out altogether and give players cold hard cash for winning, with Pokemon Regional Champions taking home $10,000 in cash for winning in the Masters division, plus 108 booster packs as well. Even on the low end, Pokemon gives $1,000 cash and 36 booster packs for players who finish in the top 32 through 17. Compare that to the crappy rubber mat that we get in Yu-Gi-Oh! and it's pretty ridiculous to see how badly every other major TCG's prize support absolutely destroys ours. And of course, I do know the whole Takahashi argument of he didn't want cash prizes in Yu-Gi-Oh! but if that's the case and they're going to stick to that, why not supplement it with other things that high level competitive players or really even casual players could use? You know, things like gift cards for travel, board, rideshare companies like Airbnb, the airlines, hotel, or Uber. Pretty sure someone who makes top 32 at a YCS would be absolutely thrilled to receive maybe a $250 airfare card to help them pay for their next trip to a YCS or even to something like Nationals. Would this add to Konami's expenses of running a YCS? Of course, but that's the price of doing business. The YCS circuit doesn't make any money for Konami anyways, in fact it loses money. But as others have pointed out, the entire point of the circuit is to be advertising for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! It's literally a business expense. Yes, spending an extra $5,000 to $7,000 per event and additional desired price support might sound insane as an expense until you realize one, this franchise has brought in $20 billion in revenue, two, Konami is an $8 billion company, and three, as I have said a hundred times on this channel, Yu-Gi-Oh! is by far the best and most profitable thing this terrible company owns. If they're not gonna shell out a little more money to help Yu-Gi-Oh! be as great as it can be, 
then what are they gonna spend that money on? Metal Gear, Castlevania, Silent Hill, these dead franchises that they don't even support anymore? Well, I guess technically Castlevania is a Netflix show, but you, you know what I mean. I don't think this trend of players jumping ship to other games is going to be the death nail in our game because honestly, attendance numbers are just fantastic right now, but eventually it could become a problem. Furthermore, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to do something positive for your community, especially when they've been asking for it for the last decade or so. Do something good and you'll probably get a lot of positive word of mouth, which actually will drive in new players to your game. Last thing I want to say before I close this video out, because I know there's going to be one guy or gal in the comment section that says, oh, Kappa G, you ain't topping no YCSs anyways. Why do you care? Which I think is just a terrible argument as to why our game has such trash price support. Because honestly, who cares if Cap G tops? It could literally be you who ends up topping the next YCS. You play your hard outs all weekend. You have the performance of a lifetime. And all you walk away with is a crappy rubber mat that, you know, not a lot of people even want. And a box of the current core set, which you could have just got from any vendor anyways. They all have it. I just think that with a company this size, with a TCG that has been this successful, arguably the most successful in the history of the planet, there really is no excuse for uh, the prize support to be this bad, especially when you got these brand new games like Lurkana and One Piece that are honestly just running circles around us. So let me know what you guys think of this whole issue or anything in between, anything said by anyone on Twitter or I guess anything that I've said as well. Leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching as always.